All right. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening. Good night. Depending on what time zone you're joining us from. Happy to be here with you, albeit virtually, for the uh, October, end of October, Columbus Tableau User Group meeting. I'm uh, Steve Bartos, have the honor and privilege of leading the corporate advanced analytics team at Worthington Industries and serving as one of the co-leaders of the TUG. Uh, before I pass it over to my teammates for introductions, I will make one note. I, Other than the fact that we have a fantastic agenda, I feel like another very strong agenda and thank you in advance to all the folks that are joining us today to to share awesome content uh, i put a note in the chat about the columbus tug linkedin group i would highly encourage you if you're on linkedin to join that group and and, and post interesting articles insights work that you're doing feel free to reach out i know I, I can't speak for everyone but i know i'm always interested in connecting with folks knowledge sharing we're you know, we're doing something like that here uh, very soon around Tableau Blueprint with uh, Josh Smith and some folks on his team. Always excited to uh, do some of that with probably some of those conversations we're missing out on and not being in person, but I think it's really no excuse. So uh, I'm doing the best I can to reach out to folks to understand uh, what's going on in the world of Tableau analytics, et cetera. So I'd encourage you to join and uh, reach out if you wanna talk Tableau or, or similar. With that, I will pass it over to Matt. Matt, come in. Thanks, Captain Steve. Captain Dr. Steve. <laughs> uh, hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Matt Rust. I'm uh, the uh, heading up over here at uh, Metwork Toledo, the uh, global service performance management team. Uh, we do uh, analytics and support for our uh, global field force of technicians worldwide. Um, so doing pretty much every every tableau product under the sun i think is finally in our portfolio so hey as, as steve mentioned certainly interested in in what we all have to to share as the community we've got some really cool things going on in columbus so um hey we're uh even silently just kind of following you all along and, and certainly gaining a lot there so uh thanks again for uh showing up to our our, our uh, virtual conference today we're certainly excited for our, our list of speakers and thanks to them aaron Perfect. I'm Erin Ham. Uh, just started out with Comcast. Um, previously was working at Nationwide Insurance. Um, I think we have a great content today, especially with our visualization contest, the first ever for Columbus. Um, I did include a link to the Viz Gallery portal um, that was hosted by Innerworks. If you guys all could take a look throughout the session of those different visualizations, we will have live voting that will occur um, around 2.30. We do have some notes and videos from the, sorry about that, um, from the developers on their different products that they created. And so we will showcase that around 2.30 as well. So with that, we'll kick it over to Alex Mu um, to talk about custom Sinky diagrams. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm uh, Alex Mo. Um, and uh, I'm very honored to, to be invited to give a talk to, to you guys about uh, uh, Tableau, uh, my favorite uh, tool. Um, and uh, uh, currently I work uh, in the Bay Area um, as a uh, Tableau consultant. Um, and um, yeah, so I've been using Tableau for about last seven, or eight years. Uh, it's uh, it, it's all, it, it has been exciting uh, uh, for me, and um, I am really excited to share some of my um, my favorite topic uh, of building charts and the building. Especially, I I like to build the tools uh, <laughs> to. Um, to help people uh, create great Tableau, yeah. So let me uh, share my screen. Yeah, so I will first talk about the uh, maybe 30 minutes and uh, I will 
also uh, have a uh, guest speaker, uh, Keys. Uh, he's my colleague, and uh, he he used my template and uh, created uh, a real case uh, uh, Sankey chart uh, with five stages. Okay, that's uh, something uh, amazing. Yeah. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so uh, thank you charts, it's uh, one of the um, pretty complex charts, um, but which is a very uh, attractive uh, and, uh, and it's also very useful, okay. And uh, it's hard to create it from scratch, okay. Um, and uh, it may not be necessary for everybody to create everything from scratch. So that's why I created this uh, template. Um, and uh, you basically, you only need to replace the data source with your data source, okay? Uh, replace the one in the template by your data source. Then you got your uh, chart, your Sankey chart. That's uh, that's basics, okay? And uh, then you can customize uh, your color, filter, highlighter, and uh, size, label, parameter, etc. yeah. Uh, so make it uh, really useful to you, yeah. Um, and uh, it's an advantage over extension. Okay, th there are some Sankey uh, extension there uh, is, uh, all you need is your Tableau skills, okay? You can customize, uh, you can open it to see all the gory details if you like, okay? And, and you can modify them uh, if you wish. Yeah. And uh, it's also free. Yeah. Some of the, I think, uh, extensions are not free, yeah. So first, um, I will show you how to uh, create a basic Sankey chart, which, is, uh, which has only two dimensions, right? The, source or target, uh, sometimes it's called the stage one and stage two or left, right, yeah. So, um, and uh, we need uh, one more measure that is uh, called size, okay. Yeah. So first, there's a few simple steps, okay. First is download the template and uh, then Add your data source, okay. When when you add it, when you add it, your data source, then you need to union with itself, okay. Make it the uh, you know size you double the size by the union, yeah. And then renaming three fields uh, in your data source, okay. Yeah. Then replace data source. Okay, let's uh, go to the uh, go to the hyperlink. Okay, and uh, here has a little tutorial in both video and in text. And we need to download the template. We have yeah, download template here. Okay, this is my template, uh, which is only have the minimum feature. Um, well, this is the one uh, that uh, you can play with a little bit, yeah. Okay, and uh, you can highlight uh, some of them, okay. Let's download it. And uh, open it. Coming. Uh, where is it? Yeah, this is the one. Yeah. So we just open it, the template, and then let's uh, uh, go to this sheet. Okay. So I have uh, basically five little sheets 
I have a little sheet here. Okay, so the middle one is the curve. Let's go to the curve. And let's add, say, my data source, my personal data source, which is not in the template. Okay, let's make it this is the sample superstore. Okay, and let's go go to union it. Uh, go to union it. Yeah. So we just need the. This is the new interface uh, in the data editor in Tableau, uh, which is the relationship editor actually. So, well, we can double click this and go to the uh, prior kind of uh, the previous kind of UI. And that's unit with with itself. Okay, yeah. So after union, uh, we need to extract it. Uh, oh, somehow, yeah. In the new interface, uh, I need to click this to make the extraction happen. Uh, I'm not sure why, but uh, uh, still need to understand. Yeah. So now we have the union uh, of the table with itself. Okay, it double the size of the table. And uh, now we have uh, extracted and uh, let's go to the curve page. Okay, so the data source is union, and uh, let's uh, uh, say we want to create a uh, Sankey chart. On the left is the category, and on the other side is the region. Okay, so let's rename this as source, and on the the other one is region on D. I have to rename it as target. Okay, and rename one measure that which will define the size of the flow. That means how wide and how skinny uh, the the flow will be for the. Okay, now, okay, after three uh, renaming, we are ready to uh, change this, okay. So, so know that I have had uh, five, uh, five uh, categories here and the three targets on the right. Now, uh, let's replace this. Okay, replace data source by the by my data source sample, which is sample superstore. Okay. Okay, there is some little bug here. I am not sure um, in the new uh, tableau uh, which uh, which cannot replace the size. Okay, so I need to do one more step. That is replace the references of this size one by size. This is a one extra step that uh, I have to do in this uh, uh, new Tableau version. Yeah. So now, okay, I'm done. Okay, I got my uh, new Tableau, uh, my new Sankey chart. On the left side is the category and on the right side is the uh, region, okay. All right, um, and uh, voila, it's it's pretty quick, right? If you know what you want on the left side and what you want on the right side and what you want uh, uh, as the as the size of the the flow, then you can do the same thing and get uh, what I get your Sankey chart. Okay, so now, yeah, we can play with uh, different uh, options. This is the uh, color, the chart by target, and uh, 
uh, yeah, the color here is uh, not quite right, but uh, yeah, you can tweak, okay. The idea is it's in Tableau, you can, you know, go to the pages and um, and the tweak by yourself, yeah. And also you can filter, uh, yeah. And to, which is kind of a, a different way to analyze the flow, yeah. Okay, once we got this, okay. And uh, we can do, uh, so yeah, once we can, once we get this, okay. Uh, we can do a few more things. Okay, so some people ask, uh, how about uh, I have I have uh, say three or five stages of uh, of a century. Okay, how can we do that? Okay, so that's uh, pretty easy, right? It, we can do do that uh, uh, like playing Lego game. Okay, we just uh, cascade them and. Uh, make it, uh, uh, we just put them together, right? <laughs> With uh, multiple Sankey charts, yeah. So uh, we can create, a, say, for a three stage Sankey chart, uh, we can first create uh, uh, Sankey one from stage one to stage two, okay? Using one template and create uh, another from st stage two to stage three, uh, via the the template, yeah, uh, and uh, and then put them together in the dashboard composer, right? Because the dashboard composer allow us to put uh, uh, many uh, many worksheets uh, in whatever way we like, yeah. So. Let me show you how to do that. Okay. Um, okay. So this is another chart I built with the same technique. Okay, that's the front. The left side is region, and the the right side is the shipping mode. Okay. So yeah, it may not make any sense, but uh, this is just a, an example I want to show you. How we can uh, how we can create uh, a three stage sunky. So you know, so this is another sunky. Okay, now I want to put this together with the previous one I just built and uh, make a three stage sunky chart. Yeah. So what we need is. Uh, this guy and this guy. Okay. Uh, okay. Sorry. We need this this guy and this guy. Yeah. So let me unhide all the sheets. Okay. And we have curve and the bar two. Okay. So let's press the control key. Okay. And select two sheets and the copy, okay, copy these two sheets and the paste it into, okay, paste here. Voila. So now we have these two pages from another, uh, from another uh, desktop uh, and this copy thing copy and paste only works in Tableau desktop. It doesn't work in Tableau public. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't know why, but uh, maybe uh, they want to make a, a difference between uh, different versions still, yeah. Okay. So now, yeah, let me get rid of this. We don't really need this. Um, yeah. And the curve two. Okay, let me. Uh, okay, here's a little trick. Okay, I want to remove the container on the right. You you double click on this little lead 
okay? And then you select the container that, that contains it. So now I can remove this, delete the container, and I get a bit more spaces, okay? And the height title, okay? Uh, yeah. Um, so let me add, okay, make it a little wider. Yeah. And Title. So it's almost there. Uh, let me show. The yes, and I want to Label, turn on the label. Turn on the source. Yeah, we don't need this anymore. So that's it. So that's how we get a three stage um, Sankey chart. Uh, the first stage is category. The second is region. And the third is uh, is the ship mode. Okay, yeah. So um, that's, uh, then you can, you know, add filters as we wish. You can add other, you can color them differently if you, if you want. Uh, use your top basic tablet skill, right? Yeah. So, uh, I, yeah, I will have this. Uh, um, I will have this uh, simple PowerPoint uh, with the links to to the template uh, to share with you guys. Uh, and uh, so that's about it. Okay. And uh, and the next, I think I will hand my hand the. Uh, the screen to Keith, uh, and uh, he will show what he did with this template, uh, which uh, is uh, went beyond my imaginations. Uh, okay. Um, so yeah, I'm uh, I'm done here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thanks for uh, for listening to me. Yeah. Okay. Hey, thanks, Alex. Everybody can hear me. Okay. All right, great. Uh, I'm Keith Helfrich. Uh, I'm the managing director of a small consultancy, um, Action Analytics. Alex is one of my consultants. Uh, we do most of our work uh, at Apple as our main customer. Um, just to put it out there, we've got a spot open. We're hiring um, for a really talented Tableau person to work on Alex's team. Um, so if you're interested in that, uh, you could reach out to Alex or I and let us know. Um, I am going to share today uh, a bit of work that I've been doing for Apple. Um, and this is a look, I just took uh, the method that Alex just showed you here and kind of expanded it further. Um, so this is what a five stage Sankey looks like, breaking it down. The, the business use case is, is contacts coming in through contact centers. So you've got kind of total contacts that come in and those are, are broken up through different channels of chat or phone. And then within chat sales and phone sales and chat service and phone service, it, it's broken up through different types of chat. People might be chatting over different channels and then um, it goes through another layer. And then there's a, a reason why they, they were contacting. So 
so folks were kind of coming through the contact center either for service or for sales through either chat or the phone. And then there's, there's different kind of um, channels for chat and phone, different um, call centers, let's say, or, or different chat channels, phone service channels. And then at the end of the day, they were, they were contacting for some reason, right? And so we wanna know which channels are people going through to contact Apple um, for which reasons. And the data, this data is, is fake data, synthetic data um, that I had kind of a, a bit of fun generating. So I, I used Alteryx to, to generate this fake data because I can't show you the Apple data. Um, so just to give like a quick overview of what the data looks like, I just generated a bunch of random data. And, and in, in it, there's this kind of long-term trend where there's sales are increasing and services decreasing. And then over the long term, um, chat is increasing and phone is decreasing. And then for all of the, the given reasons why somebody might contact us, I put in all of these different patterns. And, um, and so this is a running sum. And so if I delete the, the table calculation, there's a, there's a, there's, oops, there's a bunch of, um, there's a bunch of randomness in the data week over week so that you, you kind of get some variety in the Sankey chart uh, week over week, which we'll get to later. Um, and then there's different patterns at the different levels of the Sankey. So like if I, if I pull in say just like level two, let's say, you know, there's, there's different kind of patterns in, in the, the synthetic data. So um, this is just kind of a quick look at, at what sort of a larger business use case for the Sankey diagram might look like. Um, and this is the, the place where I began. The, th the thing that I've done a little bit differently um, on top of, of Alex's template is that each of these flows like each of these Sankey arms here, um, it looks like just one flow here from, from say chat sales to, to chat two here, uh, but it's not, actually it's many. You can see that in the level of detail of the view, I've got a lot of dimensions in here. And um, what I've done is I've taken um, the, the basic template. And if I just kind of turn on the color and I add a, a border around all of the marks, you can see that what in the past looked like one flow is actually a bunch of little tiny flows. So I increased the grain of, of the view in order to um, keep track of, of verbosely all the little steps. So there's a little tiny path for people that came from buyer through shopper, through chat one, through phone sales to total contacts. And so by adding that extra granularity in the viz, I could add um, uh, parameter actions and set actions to be able to, for example, just click on one of these nodes and then highlight everything that came through that node and turn everything else gray. And so here on the fake data, that functionality isn't, isn't working all the way through uh, just because I didn't change all the colors and stuff yet. I was, I was a little bit behind and I didn't get it all working. But on this first level, we can see that if I click chat sales, now everything that isn't chat sales has kind of gone gray. Or if I click phone sales, everything that, that isn't phone sales goes gray, but the things that are phone sales kind of highlight all the way through. And so that is kind of the basic template, I call it, that I first presented with the business user that I'm working with. And he was like, that's great. You know, this is exactly what I was asking for, but it's not really that important to me what you're highlighting with the color. He said, what we care about is week over week. And what we care about is how are these things changing over time, right? So, so in the, um, in the Apple scenario and in, and in this fake data as well, there's different data for different languages and different data for different countries. And so if say Arabic language is increasing over time, 
uh, week over week over the past couple of weeks, I need to know that so I can staff more people in this certain channel who can respond to the contacts in the Arabic language. So, so it's, it's, what's more important is how these things are changing over time. So this is kind of the, the basic place where I started by taking his template, adding the extra level of detail, and then um, adding in the set actions. And now the, the, the direction that we're moving in is to move more towards this, um, this view that shows the same data, but uh, week over week. Um, here also, uh, we can see that we, we did a little thing. Normally these Sankeys are, are sorted where you have the highest volume at the top and the lowest volume at the bottom. Uh, but for the business user in this middle thing, we did kind of a, a manual sort so that the phone is always on top and the chat is always on the bottom. So in this, in this third layer, we kind of, we manually intervened in the sorting so that the phone is always on top and, and, the, and the chat is always on the bottom. And so if I kind of go back to an earlier week, like back in 2018, when in the synthetic data, more contacts were coming through the phone then you can see that those guys would, would get really large and the, and the chat volume would, would be really small. Um, so this is just sort of the nature of, of what we're working on right now. And the way this dashboard works is um, I've got a parameter up top here where I can choose the week that I'm interested in. Uh, most often it would be kind of the, the current week, say for example. And I can toggle back and forth between whether I'm coloring week over week or year over year. Um, and then I can filter by different regions and or countries or languages. And um, so if I, if I just kind of come here to say one of these recent weeks, um, then we'll see that, that the, the phone volume shrinks dramatically compared to two years ago and the chat volume has, has filled in to take its place. And with those patterns that I had built into the, to the synthetic data, we can see which channels um, are, are, are increasing week over week by what percentage and which channels are decreasing week over week um, by what percentage. And um, then the business user also can kind of dig in and say filter to, um, I don't know, just the greater China region and um, say filter for um, contacts in in the native in the native tongue that that say aren't um, that are not English, for example. Um, and so that is just kind of a quick look at at what I've been doing with his template. I basically took the original um, template that he had, and and uh, Alexander demonstrated how to how to kind of union the data to itself, replace the data source, build the Sankey, and then he did it again for step two to step three, and he put the two side by side. I just repeated that same process to go from step three to step four, stuck it onto the right hand side to go to from step four to step five, stuck it on the right hand side, and built this this five level deep Sankey diagram. Um, and, th and then from there, uh, I, I did the kind of extra stuff to, to add in the extra level of detail. So I'm kind of curious, it, like what happens? It's been a while. I haven't really looked at this. Things can get a little bit messy when you replace the data source, but it should be the case here that like, if I click on general, um, that we highlight all of the contacts that, that all of the general contacts and the flows that came through for them. So, so having clicked on general, you can see here it's it sorted to the top, which I might kind of not prefer to happen. So I, I might take that away. But basically the, 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 the thing that I clicked on uh, through the uh, actions that I have, the set actions, is now showing me all of the contacts that came through which channels for that thing. So if we have, say, a high volume of contacts in this LOB, um, reason why people are calling, then I can, I can click on that thing and, um, 
and it'll sort to the top. And then all of the little mini flows that, that um, were for LOB would then, would then be highlighted. And I can see which ones are up week over week and which ones are down. So um, chat is chat one and two are up significantly for LOB, but chat three is down for some reason. Um, in greater China for um, the languages that are not English in the, in the, the native tongues. Um, so that is just a, a quick look at, at what I've done there with, with uh, Alexander's um, template. It was really useful because I could just start from his template and go from there and I didn't have to build the whole Sankey from scratch. Um, and I would say also that this is just like a work in progress. This is actually, you know, I have a, a weekly meeting on Mondays with my business user and we're working on it. So um, it's not yet the finished product, um, but it's, it's kind of the direction that we're headed in. Uh, thanks, Keith. Uh, are you done, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks, Keith, yeah. Uh, and uh, this is a great use case of uh, Sankey chart. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Ma many people. I mean, they. I have known many people uh, which uh, work with me or which don't work with me. Uh, they have uh, really uh, used this uh, template to create their own uh, their own chart. Uh, some are not uh, not for real chart, but they build for their. Uh, uh, PowerPoint presentations, also, which is also very good. Yeah, um, and uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, give give it a try. As, as long as I've do, as long as I've done the right thing, I haven't really played with this with this new one that isn't on the fake data. But the idea is that anywhere that I click here, um, it it highlights only the flows that go that go through that node. So in this yeah. case, I clicked on chat two, and so and so having chosen chat two. Now I see the week over week um, for Greater China um, just for chat two and everything else has, has kind of gone blank. Um, and, and if it was phone sales that I was interested in, then, then I would click on that thing. So it, it, it really is giving um, the people who manage these call centers, oh, the sort is a little broken on that guy. Um, it's really giving these folks the ability to kind of look because it's such a multi-stage process at individual um, flows through a certain stage and how they're changing. Um, and if it weren't week over week, if it was year over year I was interested in, then you just, I just changed the, the parameter. Okay, let's see if, um, is there any questions? Uh, okay, there's the one question in the chat from Carson. Do you need to re uh, union your data source to itself once, regardless of how many nodes your sign key will have? Keith, if you are able to show with the dummy data you created, what does the structure of the underlying data look like? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What's the structure of the underlying data? That's a, that's a great question. Um, the, the data that uh, is the transactional data um, wasn't in a, is not in a shape that was convenient for the Sankey diagram. So um, the, the, let's see, I might have, um, Oh, it's because I'm searching. I was searching for week. I was a little bit confused. Okay, so here in data source dimensions, um, I basically have um, data by the day, and um, so the day is uh, one of my dimensions. Um, The other dimensions, I wonder where they are here. I'll just find them. 
um, here is this kind of level one, level two. And then from there, um, the, the data is, um, from there it begins to be verbose. So, so what I have is level three verbose basically has the entire path that, um, that somebody goes through. Let me see if I can just make this bigger in case anybody's having trouble seeing it. Um, this level three verbose dimension is saying that I went through total contacts and chat sales to get here. So the values for level three are um, just chat one, chat two, chat three, but the verbose um, version of that has the entire path of how I, how, I, how I got here. How did I get to chat three? I came through total contacts, then through chat sales, and that's how I arrived at chat three. So, so what I've done in the, in, in the preparation of the data, which I did with Tableau prep from the transactional data is, is my only dimensions are these um, level one, level two, level three verbose, four verbose and five verbose. And, and the reason again for, for the verbosity for, for giving the entire path is so that I can, so that each one of these little tiny streams um, can be its own, um, its own level of detail in the, in the view. And so those then are, are the dimensions in the data, the, the five levels of, of, the, of the data, um, the date dimension, which is at the lev day level, and then the country and um, the language. So there's, there's really just those dimensions, the, the, the levels of the Sankey, which, which correspond to level one, level two, level three, level four, and then all the way over here at the end, level five. That's kind of one set of dimensions in the data. And then the other is um, the country and the language is another set of dimensions in the data. And then um, the, the date dimension, which is at the daily level. And those, those are the dimensions in the data. And then um, the one measure is um, the size dimension, which is, which is used in his template, which is basically the number of contacts. So I, I think the thing to point out is that as a result of unioning the, table, the data to itself, is, is you wind up with two versions of the data, right? So the result of the union will give you table one and table two, right? So, so the number of contacts, um, for me, I've got this calculation that, that, that basically says, hey, only, only count half of the data is the total number of contacts because the, as the union layers the data on top of itself, I don't want to double count the measure. So, so you see that, that for me, the number of contacts, which is, which is the measure that the business cares about is a calculation. And um, the measure that's actually in the data set that's a result of, of his template is this size measure. So if I drag out that size measure, it's, it's exists for, for both copies of the data because we unioned it on top of itself. Um, whereas my total contacts kind of isolates to just get the, the value from one of the two tables, not both. So I'm not duplicating the measure. Um, yeah, so that just is a quick a quick look at what we're up to. Um, so, yeah. Uh, no, that's much appreciated. That was, uh, you know, from, from your side, Alex, in terms of, uh, I think the progression, having read on your, uh, on the website, the progression from, I think it was some work of, Jeff Schaefer and another gentleman, and then to 
Ken Flairoids and some of the work he did and you seeing the need of, or the demand out there for a, to continue to evolve this template. And then Keith, I really appreciate the uh, sharing of a specific use case and you know, what, what, what does it look like when it meets the reality of, a, of, a, of the business owner, right? And trying to the digesting and the application of it to uh, you know, real, real business questions. And so. Yeah, I'll say, don't be intimidated. I was following it. It was Catherine, uh, that guy in France who took Jeffrey Schaefer's original work. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember his last name, Catherine something. Olivier. Uh, Olivier, yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah. And so I was following all along through when they were doing that. And, and that's one of the reasons why I was able to take Alex's work further is because I was building these things by hand back then and trying and, and, and familiar with the table calcs and stuff. But Alex's template really does make it a lot easier because you don't have to be so familiar with, with the nuts and bolts of all the underlying table calcs and how they work. You can just use it. And, and I would say that, you know, he showed that all the pills turned red at one point and he needed to replace references from size one to size. You know, there's some stuff like that that just kind of comes along with Tableau, but don't, don't be intimidated by that. Just, just barge through it. So when I was, when I was doing this, um, I also kind of needed to, you know, massage it through, but if you know the, the end place where you're headed, where you want to go, then, um, then just, you know, keep working on it and, and, and keep going in that direction. Yeah. Also, you can send me questions if uh, you, 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 you have uh, problems. Okay. Yeah. And um, uh, by the way, all the, the mechanism here is all this flow, those uh, square, uh, well, those flows are built using polygons. Okay. A polygons uh, is a, kind of a contour uh, of, uh, you know, we need all those vertices and uh, link them uh, uh, through a, uh, a path. And that's why, you know, a polygon has a beginning and an end point, okay? And uh, that's why we need to union the data source itself to create a beginning and an end, okay? All the dates in between, we, we, we use a kind of data densification. Uh, that's kind of interpolation kind of, uh, um, uh, you know, that's the mechanism, okay? <laughs> Behind all those charts, yeah. Yeah, all these are polygons, okay? yeah. So, yeah, and so that, that, that's a great call out. That's the reason why he's unioning the data to itself is because um, in earlier, Sankey templates, you would say, need to join the data to some sort of scaffolding table that had 96 records in it so that you would duplicate the data 96 times because in order to get a line, it would be necessary to kind of like have 96 points on the curve or 64 points on the curve or whatever. And so, and so the, the technique has just evolved so that when you, when you union the data to itself, then he says, if if it's table one, then start at number one. And if it's table number two, end at number 96. And then the densification fills in all, the, all of the intermediate points and you don't need 96 versions of the data on itself. And, and so that, that's the reason to union itself is to get the beginning and the end. And then the densification fills in all the, all the details in between and, and draws the polygons. Yeah. So now this uh, complexity is all hidden yeah, to make it easier. Yeah. yeah, and I would I would note that there's some new opportunities with the relationships features that are out in 2020.2 um, where I haven't played with this yet, but but the idea is that you could you could form a relationship between your transactional data and the template, the Sankey template that that then allows you to draw the curves, um, but then just draw, but then just drag the the values out from your regular template and and not have to have to work around the duplication of the measures a little bit. So I haven't I haven't yet begun to use relationships, but there's this whole kind of window of opportunity 
for using the relationships features together with scaffold data sources um, to perhaps make this make this sort of thing even easier. Very cool. Very cool. Um, Aaron, anything else um, from you or Mark or anyone in the audience? It doesn't look like there's any questions in the Q and A. I don't know, Aaron or Mark, if you had anything to uh, close us out. Me, just thanks, Alex, and for presenting this topic. It's definitely going to be useful for a lot, a lot of different businesses. Yeah, much appreciated, Alex, Keith. Excellent. Yeah, you're welcome. Oh, so you're welcome. Yeah. Hey, Aaron. Aaron, it might just be me. It's, it sounds very. Uh, I don't know if I don't know if being pixelated in your audio is an actual thing. I don't know if that's like a feature, like an audio feature. It's a little like a robot voice. It's very yeah, break, it is. <laughs> breaking up. Yeah. I think I think Mark's coming to. Yeah, I got it. You got it. All right. All right. <laughs> I'm sure it was an extremely elegant introduction. So. <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, but hi, everybody. Uh, glad to be back virtually in Columbus. Um, I think it's been a while, probably last summer, maybe, since I've spoken to you. Um, but it's going to be back. Um, I'm going to give you a recap-ish of what was Data 20. Um, if you want a slightly different look at it, um, I would recommend checking out um, the podcast I recently started doing. I did a more personalized version of this recap, um, which uh, if you want to hear that side of it, um, I, would, I would push you that way. So if you uh, search for Data Plus Love, uh, I'm part of that podcast family and uh, it's called the Data Fam News. So you can find it wherever you find your podcasts. But for today, we will take a look at three things. We're gonna look at the product roadmap. So we'll talk about some of the things that are getting uh, or that were talked about um, when they're gonna be released, um, when, well, as far as I know. Um, we'll talk very briefly about the rebranding of uh, Einstein Analytics. And then um, I'll touch on a few session highlights. Um, I think I've got probably 20 minutes or so. So we'll uh, go not super quick, but we'll, we'll move. So here we go. Uh, from a product roadmap perspective, there's a lot. There was a lot of stuff that actually got talked about. A um, couple of things that that I was personally excited about: um, the redesign of the notification center. Um, so now, uh, if you're familiar with Tableau Server, um, you know you've got your little bell notification area. So now your subscriptions, alerts, shares, comments—they're all consolidated into a, a, a much richer feed. Um, and it's directionally actionable from the notification. So that was a really cool um, piece that they had uh, added to Tableau Server. Um, they're also adding some Slack integration. Um, so now people can see Tableau notifications directly in Slack and then jump to that live dashboard with a single click um, just to get deeper into the data you know, from that notification. Um, Another piece was the addition of collections, um, which was kind of cool. It's like a playlist. Um, it's basically a new way to find and curate rele uh, relevant content um, across different projects. Um, and it can be, the content can be reused. So like if I put my, a dashboard in my collection, you could put it in yours. Um, but truly think of it as, as a playlist for your data. It's, it's going to be, I think it'll be a game changer for those really large deployments when people are trying to consolidate things across a bunch of different projects. Um, another cool element was the addition of personal spaces. Um, so if you've got things in progress that you want to maybe, uh, it's kind of like the office door, right? So you can lock your office door. You can keep your data and any work that's in progress can private from other users. Um, and this will help govern content. Uh, so this won't be wild, widely discoverable and it should declutter the server environment. I know um, prior to joining Tableau, um, 
I was doing some pseudo server admin and you, you saw a lot of dashboard one, um, workbook, you know, tests, those kind of things. Those things should live in the personal space now um, and it should hopefully give the Tableau server admins a little bit of relief from those cleanup efforts. Um, <clears throat> also being added, uh, auto save to the web. Um, this is huge if you do a lot of authoring in the browser. Um, I know even when I was doing some, some teaching um, of how to use web authoring, every now and then the server hiccups or the, the web browser hiccups and you lose all the stuff you've done if you haven't saved. So the addition of auto save on the web um, is gonna be great. Um, <clears throat> so uh, recommendations. Um, in the site invite. So when you're invited to a new site, um, you'll get popular content uh, recommended to you. It's all AI powered, should be great. And then uh, the last one is shared with me. So this actually came out in 2020.3. Um, once you're logged into Tableau Server or Tableau Online, you'll see this new dedicated tab for content um, that others have shared with you. And this will include your own custom views as well. Um, also, uh, centralized row level security. Um, so Tableau Server, Tableau Online security controls, um, having a huge enhancement here with centralized row level security. Um, this is gonna provide a standard way to define, define security policies that ensure data is always secured. It's accessible only to the appropriate people. And when you're setting that security policy, you'll actually see the visual preview of what rows will populate for each user. Um, I have not seen this in action yet, but I am very excited to see what the possibilities will be. Um, they're doing automated data quality warnings now. So um, if you're a data catalog user, um, you'll actually see those notifications. Um, they're much bolder, much brighter, um, and they flow through from the data source all the way down into your workbooks. Um, this one's huge, and this is coming out in 2020.4, hopefully, is Prep Builder in Browser. Um, so 100% of the Tableau prep builder functionality will be available anywhere, um, which will allow people to directly prep their data in the web. Really cool. And like the fact that they're saying that it's 100% of Tableau prep builder is huge because I know every time a new version comes out, the first question that comes up is how close are we to parity between Tableau desktop and Tableau web authoring? And each time we chip away a few different things, but here we're just basically starting from Jump Street, right? 100% of the functionality for prep will be in, in the browser, which is incredible. Um, they're also adding spatial support uh, inside Tableau Prep. So if you're doing any kind of make point, make line calculations, um, connecting to spatial data, spatial joins, um, all of that stuff uh, should be in prep. Um, you can also show and hide columns in prep. And then the last thing they're adding that they were talking about is grouping steps. Um, so basically combining steps together to very neatly package up things, um, you know, to basically to make the flow a little bit easier to read, easier to follow. And then you can kind of drill down into it and see the nuts and bolts. I know a couple of weeks ago, I was working on a pretty large prep flow and I would have loved to have this feature because it just, it started to get a little overwhelming when I had, you know, seven, eight, nine different threads going. Um, so really excited about that enhancement as well. <clears throat> um, so Tableau bridge improvements. So if you're a Tableau online uh, customer who has on-premise uh, data sources, you're very familiar with bridge. Um, now admins can manage bridges. They can modify connections and track extract refreshes directly from Tableau online without logging into a bridge. Um, additionally, uh, there's a centralized client management um, Tableau Bridge can load manage extract refreshes for uh, better resource utilization. Um, it's a huge step forward for Tableau Bridge. So if you're an online customer with on-premise data, um, definitely keep your eye out for that one. They're also adding custom schedules. Now this is for Tableau Online. Um, if you're a Tableau on Online customer, you know that there's not a lot of leeway as far as what's there for scheduling extracts. Um, so the addition of these custom extracts allow the um, extract owners to tailor the refresh schedule instead of relying on what's set and fixed by the administrators. Um, I don't know, so don't ask <laughs> whether this is configurable, whether it be turned on and off. I'm only going to assume that it can be. 
um, but we'll see. <clears throat> um, this one is really cool because I had to build this view um, in a prior life, but stale content admin. This came out 2020.3 and admins can now select and tag content as stale. So basically if it's unused, unaccessed uh, based on a specific number of days, um, then stale content can be identified um, in a search. You can archive it, you can delete it, and it helps relevant content become more discoverable. Um, <clears throat> this one's another good one, Einstein integration. So the product keynote, uh, they talked about uh, um, the efforts to bring Einstein analytics and Tableau together. Um, and so in coming in 2021, um, the AI and machine learning capabilities of Einstein discovery should be directly available inside Tableau um, as a dashboard extension, um, calculations and Tableau prep. So still a lot more to come here. Um, these are kind of the first steps in getting that Einstein and Tableau integration set up. <laughs> um, a complete redesign of the Ask Data interface. Um, if you've used Ask Data at all, um, for me, it, it's a refreshing change. I think it adds a lot more um, clarity to uh, the Ask Data just experience itself. Um, so it's going to combine speed and flexibility uh, in the search with the power of intelligence for, for natural language processing. Um, it should be easier than ever to see how the query is being interpreted. And then Ask Data actually learns from your selections to improve interactions over time. So it's, it's learning while you're using it. So I think that'll be great. Um, <clears throat> this one's a killer. This next one is the uh, Date Access Extension. Um, with model calculations uh, and analytic extensions, you'll soon have the ability to extend the date access beyond the range. Um, and this will be great for forecasting. It's great for, for label placement. Um, a lot of really, really useful, it, it seems like such a minor thing, but like if you've ever done any kind of labeling on line charts, um, you'll know that having that little bit of extra space is great. So we won't have to like toss a reference line far out into the future just to get the label to sit right. Um, so really excited about that feature. Um, this one blew my mind, super excited. This will be in 2020.4, multiple mark layer support for maps. <clears throat> so a huge and ugh, a huge enhancement to the geospatial analysis by enabling multi-mark layers in the same view on the map. Um, so th this will be killer. So anybody who does any kind of location analytics um, and you're trying to understand um, you know, relationships is for different things, this will be great. And the last thing they're adding um, is, so if you've ever been mystified by level of detail calculations, um, quick LODs are being added. Um, so you can create level of detail calculations within a workflow. Um, it's just a drag and drop a measure uh, from one table to another. You can use the context menu and then quickly customize the calculation. So it's, it's basically going to speed up level of detail uh, development. Um, all right, so lots and lots of features. Um, I will mention if you haven't, if you missed Tableau Conference, you can still actually sign up and register and go see all this content. It's all available uh, for, on video. Um, so you can go kind of watch it on demand. So. If you heard me say something, you're like, oh, I want to know more about that, by all means, go check out the, uh, the replays. And that's at tc20.tableau.com. So the rebranding, re I think a lot of people got confused by this, and you know, uh, rightfully so. Um, so since the acquisition, um, Salesforce native analytics tool, Einstein Analytics, has been positioned um, for, as the best pro product for customers working specifically in Salesforce, um, specifically with Salesforce data. And Tableau is marketed for customers working in heterogeneous environments, right? So we've got data everywhere, multiple places, not just Salesforce. Um, that distinction doesn't change, but basically the rebranding of Einstein Analytics to Tableau CRM um, was supposed to help alleviate some of that confusion. So. Um, Tableau will more tightly integrate um, with our own products. So uh, Tableau Desktop Server Prep, Tableau Online, but we're gonna bring a lot of those AI and machine, machine learning capabilities into Einstein Analytic, or it, we're bringing the AI and machine learning from Einstein into Tableau um, 
so it really, it's, it's just a branding change. The actual engine is still going to be called Einstein. It's really just the visualization product inside Salesforce that's being renamed Tableau CRM. Um, over time, these capabilities, it's going to become more and more seamless. Um, so don't, you know, don't worry. Tableau's not going anywhere. Einstein's not going anywhere. Everything's kind of the same as it was. It's just a name change. All right, so a couple of session highlights. So like I said, go back and check out um, the sessions. Um, devs at desks, uh, it was great. Um, some of the energy from those devs is hilarious um, and that's worth the price of admission alone, but they showed a lot of really cool um, innovations that are coming down the pipe. Um, so I don't know how they coach the devs, um, but they really become great presenters um, and some of the features that they showed uh, definitely, definitely worth checking out. So go, go check out Devs at Desk. Um, Tableau speed tipping. So if you've been to Tableau conference before and you've seen the speed tipping, uh, you know that could be mind blowing. It's just as mind blowing uh, in the virtual sense. So they did two parts, parts one and two. So go check out um, the, the Tableau speed tipping uh, with Jeff Schaefer and Lorna Brown. Um, set it up. Um, so this was a session done by Heidi Kalb, I believe, if I remember correctly. Um, and she basically ran through when we use sets and parameter actions, like what are the different use cases. It was a very good session, a lot of great feedback I heard from that. Um, and then the last one uh, is kind of associated with uh, what Alexander and Keith were showing today, um, drawing data visualizations in Tableau. So this is an introduction to how you can leverage Tableau to create advanced data visualizations, using drawing techniques, uh, data densifications, and polygons. Um, so that is it. Overall, I mean, if you know me, you know that I'm a huge fan of Tableau Conference and the, the in-person experience um, like cannot be replaced. But personally, I was impressed. So um, I had actually, before Tableau Conference, attended a couple of virtual conferences by some other organizations. And I was really underwhelmed. So I was not looking forward to Tableau Conference, to be quite honest. But I think in the end, Tableau set the bar really high. Um, and for any other virtual conference, I think that they are the mark to, to meet, right? Um, and I think a lot of that had to do with the Tableau community in general. Um, I know some of the tugs were doing meetups every morning. Um, there were happy hours across different regions. And um, there was even a very small data night in um, that had a live DJ. So a lot of fun um, was still had. Um, but as I said in my podcast, um, I hope we can all collectively raise a, a glass and toast to the fact that we shall never have another virtual Tableau conference and that we shall all see each other in the flesh face to face very, very soon. Um, if you want to experience another virtual conference, I will go ahead and plug Salesforce's Dreamforce. Uh, that got announced last week. Um, if you go to salesforce.com slash dreamforce, you can register. Guaranteed there will be a lot of Tableau content and uh, Tableau CRM slash Einstein stuff. So check it out. Um, thanks for having me. I think I'm right at time. Um, if there's questions, I will try to squeeze them in. Mark and Steve, I would just plug that at the Tableau conference, I gave two talks on the new data model and the relationships. Um, which is actually a pretty complex thing. Like there's a lot to it. Um, so there's two talks. One is an overview, which is kind of a high level way to understand relationships and how they work. And then the other is a deep dive into like how, how really you work with them. Um, so just, you can look for those too. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I saw a good, portion of all the sessions and the content was like every year. I mean, the content was fantastic. So um, definitely worth the time to go through and, and watch a bunch of different sessions, you know, whatever sparks your interest. So. One question that made its way in the chat was around custom schedules coming to server. This may be more wish list discussion, but any, uh, I haven't checked where that is on the, uh, on the list for, for upvoting, but there's a cry for custom schedules and server. For, for on-premise, I'm assuming. 
I mean, you can do that on premise now. You just have to work with the, your server admins and beg them and buy them chocolate. But <laughs> online is just a little more restrictive because of the uh, multi tenancy. So, mm -hmm. uh, but, but we're loosening that up. So, good stuff. Yeah, I'm excited. I, I like the uh, Tableau prep builder in the browser having that full functionality right there. Yeah, I think that's going to be that's going to be a game changer. Yep. Aaron, anything else coming through the, the Q and A? I do not see anything. Or uh, to the user group, any uh, questions for Mark? Oh, thank you, Keith, for putting that in the uh, the chat in terms of your PC twenty session. Sorry, Aaron. Yep, you're good. Can you hear me? Perfect. No more robots. Um, there's nothing in the Q&A. Is there any additional questions of upcoming features for Mark? Oh, Salesforce conference link. I just looked at that. Oh, here I you just, go. I just put it in. <laughs> okay. And apparently it's going to run all month. So like it's, oh. it's going to be quite the, uh, the event. Very cool. Perfect. So I think with that, we'll go ahead and kick it over to Tom with InnerWorks. Um, so InnerWorks was the post where we were housing all of our visualizations for the first ever Travel Columbus competition. Um, so Tom, go ahead and kick it off. Are you there, Tom? Looks like you may be having some connectivity challenges. We'll give you just a minute. One second, I'm gonna. Hello, Thomas here. Can you hear me? Hey, Tom. Yeah, Zoom kicked me off as soon as you passed me the mic, so apologies for that. No problem. All right, so let me get my screen share going. First of all, thank you for allowing me to hang out with you guys today. Um, I'm gonna give a, a short spiel about who Interworks is and kind of how we ended up uh, meeting up with the Columbus Tug leaders for this event. So Interworks is uh, one of the, well, actually the longest gold partner with, with Tableau. When we were a small company, Tableau was a very small company of about 50 employees. We've been uh, partnered with them for over 12 years, and we've built our consultancy around doing uh, full-stack data consultancy with the primary objective of making Tableau even better than it is out of the box. So where we focus on analytics, Tableau being the gatekeeper, we've built our practice around all of these tenets of full stack consultancy, having data engineers, integration experts, experience experts, enablement and trainers, and strategic consulting, which is uh, my role. I am the central practice lead for Interworks. Uh, Ohio falls into my region, and I was fortunate enough to meet uh, Derek Shreve and Steve Bardos last year, uh, who invited me to, to participate in the event today. Um, one more piece about Interworks is that uh, seeing as we are a full stack data consultancy, we bring uh, a lot of levers by which we can pull to make Tableau really excel in the uh, visual analytics space. So our partnerships with uh, platforms, with EPLs, and with data science platforms uh, to help, again, get the most out of your Tableau experience. Uh, we don't partner with any other BI tools. Uh, Tableau is our one and only. We feel it's the best in the market and has been forever and will be forever, unless that changes, right? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so how we got uh, to this point here, and I'll talk about the curator product as well. Uh, Derek, I met him last year around July. I think we just had, had some drinks 
and visited some clients and kind of hit it off. I, he's one of my closer friends in the business case now, and he's introduced me to several of his uh, most important clients over the last year or so. Uh, but he approached me saying that the Columbus uh, Tableau user group, uh, obviously being virtual because of the pandemic, we still wanted to do a, a contest for, for the visualization. So uh, is there something Interworks could do? I said, well, of course we can do it. So we actually have a product, which is called Curator, and I'll kind of walk through what that is and how it's set up for the contest, uh, which is a, a JavaScript, HTML, full platform support portal for Tableau. This allows you to get a fully customized experience from your Tableau dashboards, add enhancements to workflow, and even integrate other tools into the set. So if you are running a business that has more than Tableau, um, this becomes an umbrella by which all of those systems can kind of work together. So the Curator product, uh, you know, we started quite some time ago when Tableau released the JavaScript API. This is back when I was a youngin, around 2013. Uh, and over the years, we basically built this product as an aggregation of all of the features and requests that the clients have had over the years, and we've just put it into this platform. So off the shelf, uh, this thing actually does a whole lot of what you could just bring into your your uh, analytics COE and and you know, increase adoption, increase communication support, and also get a fully customized experience. So the portal itself, you know, being a lightweight platform, leverages all of the fancy bells and whistles that come straight out of Tableau Server, and then just a, a few more. And I'm not going to go into each of the feature sets. If you're interested in learning a bit more, uh, you can go to curator.interworks.com. But just as a couple of quick examples on turning your Tableau analytics into something that's uh, highly branded, uh, you know, pixel perfect within uh, either your website experience or just what the company expects from the branding perspective. Um, we approached this uh, from one of our, our largest clients that makes running shoes, uh, that they want everything that their uh, decision makers and their companies to see to all be on brand, every single thing, even their analytics. So there is no even self-service that is done in Tableau uh, that doesn't get put through the wash and, and come out beautiful on the other side. So as an example, the curator gives us the ability, now that we are you know, building this in uh, a website, we can do anything we want. We can you know, enhance navigation. We can have uh, additional information or additional resources, videos, uh, how to support tickets, integrating with other CRM systems, et cetera. Uh, but as again, a basically a window into your analytics. Everything then being powered by Tableau, uh, we hook up to all of the authentication, security, permissions, and all of this stuff. And then of course, bringing in the Tableau uh, with all the extendable functions with uh, building PowerPoints. This one's really nice. You can actually build custom PowerPoints right in the portal. And you can do this from multiple workshops. So again, Tons of things that we can do with this. I won't go into all of it. But again, being a website, we can make it look and feel like anything we want it to do. And of course, this being a web object can be embedded in other systems. Uh, but we see actually, even with uh, the ability to uh, embed some Tableau into Salesforce or into ServiceNow or any system that we have running, or even internal CRMs or in intranets, et cetera. Uh, we actually see that the portal is pretty powerful uh, to actually bring that, you know, be the top of the uh, of the pyramid, as it were, because we can bring in anything here. We can embed Salesforce, embed analytics, embed Einstein, et cetera. So, quick overview. So, how we adjusted the the portal just a bit to to handle the contest for you guys. Uh, of course, the portal allows us to publish dashboards. Easy. Uh, but we wanted to add a feature where we could actually track a little bit better uh, how people are going to interact with the visualizations, um, access them, and then also, you know, do some voting. Um, you know, so this one actually is fairly basic. We have a few of these visits that are published already. I'm not sure quite your timeline uh, on the contest if that's either come and gone, but I have the opportunity to click and favorite, which is establishing my votes. And of course, this is leveraging my my Google credentials, uh, this being an open system uh, that's not uh, in anyone's intranet. We figured everybody probably has a Google account. 
using Chrome. So we can just capture as many users as possible. So we just plugged that functionality into the portal. And then now we have a, a Viz contest. And what's exciting about this, uh, we kind of did things low key on our side. Uh, of course, I was working with Aaron and, and Derek to get things up and running. Uh, but until we actually launched the, the contest and everything was going to work out fine, uh, that was the point which and I went back to Interworks and said, hey, here's what we did uh, with this team from Tableau and the user group in Columbus uh, using our, our platform to do the Viz contest. And since then, it's two weeks ago that I announced it internally, uh, we've had, uh, I think, three or four teams reach out and say they, they want to do the same thing uh, either in the companies uh, that they're engaged with or in other user groups. So um, the idea that you guys brought up, did, let's do this virtually, let's have a platform to do it, I can jump in and help out. Uh, we're actually going to you know, do many of these things because obviously uh, using our portal uh, gets eyes on Interworks. If you've never heard of us, you could find out more. Uh, but also it's, it's, a, it's a nice tool to help, help folks out. Uh, and so I hope that... If you guys are using this, and as you're using it, you'll think that, uh, hey, this was nice. Um, so while we're unable to be person to person, we can still um, you know, kind of showcase our work and, and talk about it and vote, et cetera. So um, short spiel. Um, happy to take some Q&A, I think, with uh, it being a webinar. No one's going to talk at once. So if someone has any questions, I guess Steve or, or Aaron, you can holler at me. Any questions for Tom, esteemed audience or panelists? I will say I greatly appreciate the time, energy, and effort you and the team put toward this time. Sure. You know, it turned out really well. Good, good. I appreciate it. And I, I, I appreciate you guys thinking of uh, me that maybe I could help out. I think our, my relationship with Derek is he'll hit me up once a week, say, hey, can we do this? And the answer is always yes. We just have to figure out how. So uh, this was a nice Nice little project, and I actually had some fun helping put it together as well. So I appreciate you guys inviting me. Aaron, anything from your side? Nothing on my side. I think now we can jump into the actual Viz contest. Um, let me share my screen. Everyone see my screen okay? Ken, you're a little pixelated, but I'm, I'm starting to think it's kind of cool. I'm wondering if it's because the fan on my computer is going at the same time. It's trying to cool off. Um, if it gets to be too bad, Steve will let you just take over. Um, so we do have a couple of videos that people have submitted. So there was five visualizations in total that were submitted to the visualization contest. And so we, instead of choosing two to, or two to three top, um, we want to just go ahead and talk about all five of those. Um, voting is live currently, so feel free to go out to the slido.com with the code 01234 and vote for your favorite. Um, but in the meantime, let's go ahead and just learn a little bit about the visualizations and who created those. Hello, everyone. My name is Chad Bonick. I am a business analyst senior with Huntington National Bank. I have been with the company for five and a half years. Three of those years, I have been in the role of a business analyst. All three of those years have been spent getting the chance to utilize and learn Tableau. Um, while I am self-taught, like most of you here, through general use of YouTube and Tableau.com and all the resources available there. Um, while I have been using Tableau for over three years now, this is not only my first public visual that I've ever posted, but it's also my first time ever ending into a visual competition. Um, some of my inspiration around this dashboard that I've created is I am an avid soccer fan in real life. And while I'm a soccer fan, I'm also a video gamer as well. And I participate in a FIFA league, which is um, the video game version of soccer. And in that league, um, there was not really any good way to track stats over a period of time. We could see individual game information, but nothing beyond that. So some of the challenges that I faced when creating this was really I just wanted to push myself to use some of the new methods and, and features that I had learned recently in Tableau as much as possible. And let me go ahead and jump over to that now. 
Um, my overall design is seen here. All the colors are based on the league colors that were assigned throughout the season. Um, we can see within the league there are three different divisions, Super League, League 1, and League 2. Um, right now there's only Season 14 information available. Here we have some generic goals per games information, as well as just the pro progress bar for how many games have been completed for each one of the leagues. The season ended uh, back in August, so that's why we can see that these are all showing 100 at this point. Uh, this will take us to our division table. I'm currently filtered to League 1, but able to be shown on all three of the different leagues that exist. And here we just have um, some multiple sheets put together with the horizontal box to show the different positions that each team placed at the end of the season with some information here on the last five games that were played, points per game information, as well as a bunch of other stats that we are able to track from the league. That will jump us over to the division stacks. Here we just have some stack rank views of different metrics that happen within the league. Um, here we're seeing just how many goals were scored in a game total. As you can see, um, most games only had one goal happen in them. Um, we have our score line spreads for home away, and then we have our general team stack ranks for stats like passing, aerials, shots, and possession one loss. That will take us to the score line spread. Uh, the initial view here takes us to is the game list view with just the generic date time that the game took place, opponent, home team, away team, score line, and then here if you click this it will actually take you to the page for that game that took place in the league website. Um, we have some pagination here to view you know, 10 matches at a time. These are multiple sheets, so I wanted to make sure to not have too much pages filtered at different times. Um, this takes us to the team overview with some generic stats here for across all the different stats that we track. This was probably the hardest part here, This um, having the last five and then the last five home and away, because we had to assign a custom number to home games and away games. Um, and that was definitely a, a tricky one to come up with. Um, this is probably one of my favorite parts of the visual is this team progression graph, with the blue line being the points acquired, and the red, green, yellow for the different results, and then the score lines exist. So the top is the home score, the bottom is the away score. Um, Within there's the team stacks. This is to stack rank players on the individual team filtered to, similar to the division stacks. And then we just have a generic list view here where any one of these can be sorted on to be the primary stat that you're seeing the rank of with more pagination here as well. Then the last view, two of the last of the two views is the player overview. This is just a generic player stats page that has a bunch of different information, whether it's attacking, you can switch this to passing, there's also defending, and then overall stats. The stat type can be either total or points per game, with the ability to see division detail if a player played for multiple teams in one season in different divisions. If they played goalkeeper, you can click this to show some generic goalkeeper stats that exist. And then the player list is just another list view of all the players in the league with a bunch of different filters that you can choose from to look at different players and how they performed. Again, sorting by each variable allows you to see the stack rank um, based on that stat. And with the highlighter here, I hope you enjoyed. Thanks. Perfect. So again, that is Hello, everyone. My name is Chad Bonnick. That is the PCN Stats Dashboard. Um, next up is going to be the... Um, say no to child marriage dashboard um, by Ken. Hello, Columbus Tableau User Group. First, I'd like to thank the Columbus Talk leadership team, Aaron, Matt, and Steve, for holding a first friendly competition among us Tableau enthusiasts in Central Ohio. My name is Ken Wirantana. I'm an analyst at the Ohio State Wexner Medical Center. As far as Tableau experience, um, I use many different tools in my career fell in love with Tableau with its easy to learn, beautiful visualization, and most importantly, community support, like no other communities I've ever been a part with. Very fortunate to get my Tableau desktop specialist certification back in the summer, and looking forward to my next level certification in the very near future. Uh, I've been actively following Makeover Monday since the pandemic starts. 
I chose WIC39 dataset, uh, which came from UNICEF. It stands for uh, United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund, about the underage marriage around the world. I was born in Southeast Asia, uh, so I experienced firsthand where practice like this was pretty common. There are many drivers, uh, including the family honor and pressures from the parents. Family might consider rude to say no if someone comes to propose. Finances, financial security is also another reason. But the most obvious reason uh, is gender inequality and the belief that girls are inferior to boys. Some long-term impacts, um, especially for girls, according to some articles I read, ranges from marriage more often than not, limit girls' uh, access to education, which leads to their economic opportunities being limited. More vulnerable to domestic violence, um, the vast majority of this marriage are younger girls to older men. So there is an imbalance of power uh, in these relationships, which often link to domestic violence. Um, some health risk, since this girl is more likely to experience depression, PTSD, contracting sexually transmitted diseases, since often they are unable to negotiate or discuss contraceptions with their husbands. Moreover, uh, the girl's body not physically developed enough to give birth, which may result in miscarriage, difficulties during labor, or even premature death. So what can we do to help? Educating and empowering girls, providing their families with income opportunities, raising awareness to government, and community leaders to ensure supportive laws are being enforced. I'm sure there are many other ways to end this issue. To quote one of the visits that was submitted to uh, Makeover Monday, this chart should not exist because these numbers should not exist. Some challenges I face when, uh, when building this biz is in this particular data set, um, I was more familiar with the topic, but how can I create a simple biz um, that will carry a clear message that I like to tell my audiences? I don't want to end up with beautiful and fancy business, but do not provide my insights. Uh, I also struggle a bit with colors. Um, some experts recommend not more than three to four colors in your dashboard. I then decided to pick the obvious scarlet and gray colors as major colors. Go box. Uh, the overall design of the dashboard, um, I start by explaining what my business is all about, um, then use a simple map that showed the world landscape of underage marriage. Create a parameter that users can toggle between different ages and gender. Uh, in addition to that, I want users to view some important statistics when they hover over a specific country. Finally, uh, I finish with small multiples. I feel that this type of visualization enable my audiences uh, to compare across variables and possibly reveal some patterns. Shout out to uh, Florlich Twins and Andy Cribble for formulas and how to make this type of chart. That is Ken's design on the Say No to Challenge Marriage. Um, with this, there is a graph where you can click in and hover over each of the different countries. Um, you can also change the married by age from 15 to 18 for female, and then also 18 for male as well. And that will go ahead and change each of the different graphics that are listed below. Um, so if we change the age married by to 15, we'd be able to see how these um, proportions exist across the different countries. So next up of the visualizations, we have the Franklin County, Ohio addiction related data. Um, so Lee was not able to provide a video um, with the pandemic and everything going on. They are pretty swamped at the City Health Center. Um, but a little bit about Lee and his design. Um, he's an epidemiologist at Columbus Public Health and his team has been slowly building the skill set in Tableau and many different programs as well. He's taken two tablet courses through the city, beginner and intermediate, and the rest he has planned learned through trial and error and ample help from his supervisor, Ben, and other team members. The inspiration for this masterpiece, um, this particular dashboard or set of dashboards was a big undertaking with the goal of creating a one-stop shop for any and all data that could be related, related to addiction issues specific to our community. It is an evolving tool that will likely change over time as more data becomes available to us and for us to share with the public. 
When building this, he faced a lot of challenges. Though, through utilizing some advanced features within Tableau and finding shortcuts to accomplish what we needed to get done, again, thanks to Ben, my manager, we even faced the challenge of a very thorough review process consisting of subject matter experts within the community. The overall design of the dashboard was to keep the visualization simple and straightforward. He looked at a bunch of different dashboards available publicly and really strived for a colorful palette and design consistency from section to section. He even looked into tools such as Color Brewer and Color Hex to make sure color palettes work well together. Part of our job as epidemiologists is to make sure the data we convey makes sense and tells a story. Even the language we use needed to go through a review process to make sure what we were saying and or describing could be understood by community members. We can sometimes get lost in our own data worlds and not everyone is going to find the details as interesting as we do. In this dashboard, he does have multiple different dashboards. Um, so this is the landing page. And um, so if we want to look at the overall overdose deaths between Franklin County, we can go ahead and click on this dashboard and it's going to go ahead and bring up different rates of overdose deaths um, comparative with race and sex, the total number in 2020, and then how these are all comparing. We also are able to look at prescription drug monitoring. Um, so what are the different classes of drugs being dispensed in Franklin County um, and how many opioids have been dispensed within the year 2020. Um, you can also go ahead and there's parameters to select different types of drug classes, whether it's opioid sedatives or benzodiazepines. Um, each one of these dashboards have the overall goals as well as tracking measurements inside of them, um, as well as the level to return back to the home page. This is available in the public um, Franklin County website as well. So with that, um, the next one up is gonna be Robert Ford with the growth of Columbus. Um, so Robert Ford is a GIS analyst for the Columbus Division of, Fi Division of Fire. He got involved in Tableau when the city purchased it and took their training courses that, and has been hooked ever since. This dashboard shows the growth of the city of Columbus since 1834. Per decade, using the city's published annexation shape file, best viewed on a no, non-mobile platform, um, we see annexations come in regularly and was interested how this changed over the years. Um, so with this, we can see the different graphs between 1830 to 2020. Um, and we can also go ahead and click all the way back to the beginning. Um, he does include animations in this. Um, and as this clicks through, um, it will actually grow the city of Columbus in the shape. So we can start to see decade by decade how the city evolves. So anything that's new is in red and then anything that was available the decade prior is still existing. And then the last visualization is by Nadia Miller and Steve or Matt, if you want to take the lead on this one. Absolutely. To the degree that I can speak intelligibly about it. <laughs> yeah, so it says that Nadia is an equal opportunity representative for the mayor's office of diversity and inclusion. And as I was exploring this, and it may be obvious, but I'm, I'm excellent at stating the, the ultra obvious. This allows you to do is, is, is get an overview in terms of the, the city of Columbus and certifications that are provided by category below business name description, and then you know where they fall in terms of by gender, by ethnicity, and then some of the uh, groups, whether it's minority business owners, business enterprises, or women business enterprises. And uh, Clicking on any one of these, either the bars, the pie slices, the uh, highlighted table will filter across the visualization and also below in terms of the internal directory. 
one thing that I do want to call out on her visualization is she was able to incorporate a reset button. Um, so Love if we it. want to re reset to the very beginning of the dashboard and what it what looks like without any filtering, you can go ahead and click this reset button and it takes away all the filtering that you had previously imposed. I was actually flailing around with that a bit today. <laughs> Perfect. So those are the five different visualizations that made their way into the competition. We want to thank each of you for your time spending building these as well as submitting, creating your videos um, and showcasing them to the Columbus community. Um, with that, we want to go ahead and open up the Viz contest voting. Um, so with that, I'm going to stop sharing. Steve, if you want to go ahead and share your screen um, with the results. Um, again, the slide all poll is available. Um, if you go to sli.do and then our code is 01234. So we'll give you each a few minutes to vote. I think you're muted, Steve. I don't want to influence voting by putting up the results too early. And <laughs> they're coming pouring in. Yeah. We could be able to see how they change over time, too, as oh. people start to vote. Should I show it, Aaron? I'll leave it up to you. It's up to you. Click Chad's. Chad's in the lead. Show it. <laughs> Here comes Ken down the stretch. <laughs> Lee and Ben. Did we set a timer on this? I could do this all day, Aaron. <laughs> we'll give it about three or four more minutes. Um, it looks like we've got a decent amount of votes, but we have about 80 of you on the call. Um, so over half of you yet to vote. Vote early, vote often. <laughs> Again, the website is sli.do and the code is 01234. Aaron, any announcements or uh, other news and notes? I know we're uh, working right now on our late December or late November, early December session. Anything else uh, coming to mind? Nope. The next one is after we conclude this poll, we have one more poll for you guys. Um, and this one's going to really focus on what you would like to see out of the Columbus Tableau user group. What kind of content that you're interested in? Um, how do we make this more engaging in the virtual environment? Um, and anything, thoughts, comments, anything that you want um, will be available as soon as we end this poll. And as James asked, this will be recorded for a later viewing as well. We know this is the first instance of the Viz competition, um, but hopefully with more engagement, we will be able to do this um, throughout the years. All right, we'll go ahead and give it about one more minute. Get your votes in. You want me to count it down from, from 41, 28? <laughs> I can count down from whatever. I'm really good with the numbers, Aaron. 
All right. Pick a number and count us down, Steve. Three. <laughs> two and close the polls. I think I was I was doing some math and unless every single person votes for I think it's I think it's I think we can safely say the the winner has been Awesome. So we do, again, want to thank all of the participants in the first viz contest. They were a lot of great visualizations to choose from, um, and we hope that you continue to iterate and create great products, um, both in work and in your free time. Um, with that, we want to congratulate Chad on being the winner of the first Columbus Tableau User Group viz competition. Um, so Chad is part of this meeting, and we've enabled you to speak um, if you want to say a few words. Yeah, I just want to say thanks to everyone for voting for me. Um, as you heard in the video, this is my first time ever joining into any Viz competitions. I've been kind of keeping my eye on what's been going on with them in the community and all other communities for a while. But um, it was really exciting to be able to participate in one finally and pretty awesome outcome too, I would say. So thank you. <laughs> no problem. Awesome. Thank you again for submitting. Um, we will reach out to you after this meeting um, to contact about the prize for winning the contest. Um, and so with that, we do have one more poll available in Slido. Um, and so again, the code is 01234. If you want to, please put in different content that you would like to see in the future, as well as feedback, um, anything about the user group that you might want us leaders to know. Again, it's probably all an anonymous. So um, no need to feel like you're going to hurt our feelings. Um, and with that, I'll send it over to Steve to close out. No, that's great, Aaron. How long will we have that open? Um, this will be open until the end of the day. Awesome. All right, so yeah, please, we would uh, greatly ap appreciate your feedback and we'll do our best to incorporate it into uh, upcoming meetings. I'd like to thank uh, fellows on the fellow leadership team um, all the wonderful speakers, presenters we've had, and along with you, our, our absolutely fabulous studio audience. We look forward to uh, getting the uh, agenda out there for our upcoming meeting. And if we can ever be of any assistance, help, or you want to chat all things Tableau, find us on all the socials or some of the socials or, or LinkedIn and email. Uh, <laughs> But greatly appreciate the time and hope everyone has a wonderful and safe rest of their day. Yeah, and with Happy that, just as an FYI, we will not be having a uh, meeting in November. Our first meeting is, our next meeting will be the first week in December, I believe. Excellent. We probably could have talked about Halloween costumes, Aaron, but I know, I know you're still in deciding yours. <laughs> I don't know, I'm going to Disney. Bradbourne, actually, so. <laughs> awesome, right, thank, well, thank everyone. Have a good one. Um, oh, we do have a few other questions. Um, oh, how oh. is the recording accessed? If you follow our LinkedIn group, which Steve posted in the chat earlier, that is we post that in there about a week after each time. Um, it's also available on Tableau's YouTube. So if you type in Columbus Tableau user group along with the date, so August 20, or October 2020, um, it will pull up this session as well as previous sessions. Um, where did you say for Are you serious? Is? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then how do we participate in other community sessions, such knowledge sharing sessions? Steve, do you want to take that one? <laughs> Wait, what's the question again? I was, I was. How do we participate in other community sessions slash knowledge sharing sessions? We would say yes. <laughs> no, we talk about that a lot. And that's really one of the reasons we want to get some additional uh, feedback from the community. We've, we've spoken off and on about how to do that. Like what's the appropriate mechanisms? You know, I think we, in person, we've had, whether it's been like rotations and stations and breakouts and people sticking around and talking about Tableau and solving problems and all that good stuff. But we're interested in hearing from you. And we, if that's something that's top of mind and up high on the priority list is something we can continue to uh, to investigate. But I mean, one way is even just getting on that, if you want to get on that LinkedIn channel, 
you could reach out to me and we can try to you know coordinate with folks or i think it's that we're trying to find that i don't know if it's a slack channel or some way you could say hey is anyone out there anyone available friday 1 p.m and to have a you know knowledge sharing session on you know picket i don't know what it is almost like a help desk tableau doctor brainstorming I said a lot. I'm not sure any of that helps other than introducing more questions, but. Yeah, if you have any ideas um, of how to create those community sessions slash knowledge sharing virtually, we would definitely be interested in hearing this. Um, as well as if you ever want to help out with the Tableau user group, feel free to reach out to Steve, myself, or Matt. Um, we're right. always willing to Thank have you. more people help us. Much more succinctly said, Aaron. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Um, and again, the poll will be open until the end of the day. So if you want to chew on some content or things you'd like to see in the future, um, it is open until midnight tonight. Um, and then we will review these at our next internal meeting. All right. Have a great weekend, everyone, or week, I guess. Yeah, Aaron's saying just take, take the rest of the week off. <laughs> Trick or treat, party. It's all on Aaron. It's on the Comcast tab. All right, thanks everybody. Bye-bye. Congratulations, Chad. Derek's showing up with the wheelbarrow full of cash any minute. <laughs>